Hi, this is your teacher Barbara Rademacher and we're going to be talking about relative maxima and minima. Okay, so here we go. These two points are the highest points on the graph. This is one of the lowest points, although the graph keeps going down forever over here and over here. So, so these points will eventually be much lower than this. For that reason, we call this the absolute maximum. This is absolutely the highest point on the graph. All right. Now, but let's get to relative maximum. In its own little neighborhood, and maybe <clears throat> I'll just draw this rather than draw it with a pencil. Um, in its own little neighborhood, this point right here is the highest point. It's not the very highest point on the graph, this is. But in its own little neighborhood, this is the biggest bully on the block. All right, we call it a relative maximum because over here, it's the highest point. The relative maximum is 11, and it occurs at x equals negative 10. Okay? Now, this point in its own little neighborhood is the lowest point. We call it the relative minimum. The relative minimum is the y-coordinate negative 12, just like the relative maximum was the y-coordinate here, which is 11. We say that the maximum or the minimum occur at the x-coordinate, so that the relative minimum of negative 12 occurs at x equals 0.7, because this is the point negative 0.7, uh, uh, negative 12. And I hope I said negative 0.7, because negative 12 occurs at negative 0.7. Now, 816 is definitely the highest point on the graph. These legs of the graph will continue to go down forever and ever. They're never going to turn around and come back up. You'll know that soon. But right now, it's enough to say that, yes, this is a relative maximum because in its own neighborhood, it's the highest point, but it's also the very highest point on the whole graph. So the absolute maximum is 16, and it occurs at x equals 8. So we have a maximum here, a relative maximum. We have an absolute maximum. We have two maxima. All right, maxima is the plural of maximum. We have one relative minimum. We don't have an absolute minimum because the graph goes down forever on the left and forever on the right, and you'll always be able to find a point lower than whatever you would try to declare was the absolute minimum. So that won't work. But we do have a relative minimum right here. OK. Talk to you later. OK, now. We're going to talk about intervals of x-coordinates on which the graph is increasing and decreasing. And we always read from left to right. So increasing, and here, here are the intervals, the two intervals stuck together with a u for union. Remember that from intermediate algebra. The two intervals of x-coordinates on which the graph is increasing are this part, and notice that as this graph goes out to, well, as it goes down, it also go, goes out to the left forever. So we would say the graph is increasing from negative infinity to negative 10. This is negative 10 on the x-axis. And from negative 0.7 on the x-axis to 8 on the x-axis. So on this neighborhood, right here, the graph is going up. And on this neighborhood right here, the graph is going up. All right, and this is how we would write it. Negative infinity to negative 10 is this arm. 
and negative 0.7 to, to positive 8 would be this arm. And those values we're naming are values on the x-axis. You can think of them as being like, like street addresses. <coughs> street addresses. Okay, now intervals on which this graph is decreasing, that is going down from left to right. Again, we give the numbers as intervals of x-coordinates. This graph goes down from negative 10 on the x-axis to negative 0.7 on the x-axis. And the graph goes down from 8 to infinity on the x-axis because this keeps going down forever and to the right forever. So I have just told you what neighborhoods, well, what neighborhoods to look in to find where the graph is increasing. There are two neighborhoods. And what neighborhoods to look in for where the graph is decreasing. Notice we never use brackets when we're talking about increasing and decreasing. There's a reason for that. Negative 10, for instance, is the point at which this arm stops increasing and starts decreasing. So exactly which interval are you in going to are you going to include it in? You can't include it in both because x with a function can't be more than one value. Okay, so we just have to use parentheses to say where these things are happening, where these actions of the graph are happening. Okay. Okay, now let's do a homework problem or two. We're going to be talking about what's called function behavior. Functions can increase, they can decrease, and they can be constant. Okay, so when we're being asked on what intervals, that means where on the x-axis, uh, what interval of x-coordinates, on what intervals is the function increasing? Well, there are two. From what looks like, let's see, negative 1, negative 2, oh, I, I don't have to do this. I can make it bigger. I can make it bigger still. Woo! Okay, so on what intervals is this function increasing? I find the left end point and the right end point. So negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6. So from negative x equals negative 6 to 0, the graph is increasing. Th this is x equals 0 here on the y-axis. So from negative 6 to 0, the graph is increasing. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. From 6 to 1, 2, 3, well, well 6, 7, 8, 9. So from 6 to 9 on the x-axis, the graph is also increasing. Now let's close this and go back here. So, from negative 6 to 0 and from 6 to 9, let's see. Excellent. We're so smart. Okay, on what interval is the function decreasing? Well, there's only one, right? And here it is. The graph is going down from here to here. So this this point corresponds to x equals 2, and this point corresponds to something else, to 3, 4, 5, 6, to 6. So I would say 2 to 6. Two to 6. Let's check that out. All right. Now, on what interval is the function constant? A flat graph like this, a flat line is called a constant function. Okay, so this, this would be the equation 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 
This would be the, the equation y equals 6. But here, notice we ignore whether the circles are full or empty when we're talking about intervals of increasing and decreasing and constant. We only use uh, parentheses. So from x equals negative 9, negative 8, negative 7, negative 6, to negative 6, this graph is go going to be constant. So I will say negative 9 and negative 6. And I'll check my answer. And we're done. That's all there is to that kind of problem. You'll have a few others like 2, 3, 4. But just remember, when you have more than one interval on which something is happening, you don't even have to put a U yet. They're using the word AND, so no problem at all. All right. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.